You've heard China has surveillance, but did you know school kids get facial scans before class and AI decides if they're distracted? Now imagine that kind of system everywhere. In this video, we're breaking down how China built the most advanced surveillance system on earth, where AI analyzes your behavior, monitors your emotions, and creates a digital profile that follows you for life. You'll see how the one person, one file system works, how tools like DeepSeek power real-time monitoring, and why this model is now spreading beyond China's borders. How China built its AI surveillance system. To understand how China built the most powerful surveillance system in the world, you have to go back nearly 20 years. What started as a basic digital policing project quietly evolved into something far more complex. It was called the Golden Shield. At first, it looked like a modernization effort. Law enforcement agencies were updating records, improving coordination, and creating digital databases. But behind the scenes, the government was building a system designed to connect identities, locations, and behavior patterns across the entire country. Then came the cameras, millions of them. Under a national initiative known as Skynet, China began installing surveillance equipment in cities, neighborhoods, train stations, schools, and public spaces. Today, more than 700 million cameras are active across the country. Some are placed on streetlights, others are hidden in elevators, inside apartment buildings, and along walkways. Many are powered by AI capable of identifying individuals, tracking movement, and recognizing unusual behavior in real time. But the real shift wasn't just about monitoring volume. It was about what the system could understand. The software behind these networks connects faces to names, matches people to phone numbers, tracks their recent locations, and can even study their body language for signs of stress or agitation. All of this data feeds into a digital profile. It doesn't just record where someone has been. It builds a complete pattern history, a living file that updates constantly and never disappears. This framework wasn't built just to solve crimes. It was built to watch society and control how it functions. How the state builds your digital identity behind the camera networks and face scanning software lies a deeper system most people have never heard of. It's called One Person, One File. This isn't just surveillance, it's storage, and it's personal. Every Chinese citizen, from students to business owners, is assigned a digital file that constantly updates with new data. This file doesn't just include legal records or government paperwork. It stores behavioral information, travel history, online activity, phone usage, spending habits, even how often someone visits religious sites or meets with certain social groups. It works like a centralized tracking ledger. When a person enters a subway station, facial recognition confirms their identity. When they make a phone call, metadata is logged. When they buy something online, the system notes the purchase and the location. Every routine behavior is quietly logged and added to the file. On its own, one detail might seem harmless, but over time, the system paints a full picture who someone is, how they think, what they might do. These files are accessible to multiple state agencies. Police can use them to flag suspicious individuals before a crime occurs. Local governments can assess a person's behavior before offering services or approvals. Even employers, in some cases, can access data when screening new hires. It's not just a record of what you've done. It reflects your standing in the eyes of the system. And for many, it affects everything from school admissions to housing applications. In a society where being seen as trustworthy is key, these files quietly shape opportunity, movement, and reputation, all without the person being notified or given a say. What do you think is more dangerous? The cameras watching you or the AI deciding what your behavior means? Drop your answer in the comments. Where do you stand? When surveillance starts thinking, artificial intelligence is no longer just supporting China's surveillance network. It is running. At the center of this evolution is a language model called DeepSeek. Originally designed to analyze data and interpret language, DeepSeek is now being used to monitor apps like Telegram, flag VPN usage, and detect conversations the state deems sensitive. It works in real time. Not only does it scan what people say, it analyzes how they say it, the tone, timing, and emotional patterns of messages. This allows authorities to detect organized activity 
or unrest before anything happens in the physical world. If a group chat seems too active, or if keywords spike across different regions, DeepSeek can flag it within seconds. The same system powers China's live camera networks. DeepSeek can scan a video feed, identify someone's face, pull up their digital file, and evaluate their actions in real time. If a person looks nervous, enters a restricted zone, or moves unpredictably, the system can alert authorities without human input. It also looks at patterns over time. How often someone gathers with the same people, how long they stay in certain places, whether their behavior is changing. DeepSeek's job is not just to record, it is to learn, predict, and act. By combining real-world movement with digital activity, it gives the state a powerful new tool, the ability to respond to problems before they happen and to quietly watch anyone who might become one. What everyday surveillance really looks like. For most people in China, surveillance isn't hidden, it's routine. In cities like Shenzhen, you can't walk a block without being recorded. At subway entrances, facial recognition is used to verify identity before you pass through the gate. In residential buildings, cameras track who enters and when. Even public restrooms and school classrooms rely on biometric scans. These tools are promoted as conveniences. They help prevent crime, speed up access, and make city services more efficient. But over time, they normalize constant monitoring until it no longer feels unusual. In schools, students are scanned when they enter campus. AI monitors whether they're paying attention, sitting up straight, or showing signs of fatigue. In the workplace, security cameras may track employee movement. Some companies even use emotion recognition software to evaluate customer service staff. Outside urban centers, the methods shift. In rural regions, the state often relies on grid-style human reporting. Communities are divided into zones, with assigned local monitors who report anything unusual, including unfamiliar visitors or unscheduled gatherings. It's surveillance through both machines and neighbors, and every action, no matter how small, becomes a data point. Leaving your home late at night, visiting the same address too often, spending a bit more than usual. Each detail gets stored, analyzed, and added to your profile. For many, it doesn't feel like being watched. It feels normal. But the system is always there, watching, recording, interpreting, and deciding what comes next. Would you accept this level of surveillance if it promised a safer city? Or is the trade-off in personal freedom too high? Share your thoughts in the comments. China's Blueprint for Global Surveillance What started as a domestic project is now becoming an export. Over the last decade, China has quietly become the largest supplier of surveillance technology in the world. Companies like Hikvision, Dahua, and Huawei have provided facial recognition systems, smart cameras, and data analysis software to more than 80 countries. Many of these systems are sold to governments in Southeast Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Some use them to modernize law enforcement or manage urban traffic. Others see it as a way to tighten control over their own citizens. Along with the equipment, China often includes technical training, software updates, and financing through state-backed programs. That support gives China more than just a sales footprint. It creates political influence. The countries that adopt these systems are also adopting a framework where constant monitoring becomes normal and personal privacy fades into the background. Some parts of this model have even appeared in Western democracies. Airports now test facial recognition tools at boarding gates. Police departments are exploring real-time surveillance and predictive AI to guide patrol roads. The language may be different, but the goal is familiar. Reduce risk by collecting more data. This has sparked growing concern. Human rights groups warn that surveillance exports are not just about technology. They carry with them a political philosophy that sees privacy as a vulnerability and public silence as a strength. What was once built to manage life inside China is now shaping the way other nations view control, compliance, and power. China's AI surveillance system goes far beyond cameras. It is a powerful structure that monitors behavior builds digital profiles, and influences real-world decisions. From school scans to exported surveillance models, it is shaping how governments around the world think about control. You now understand how tools like DeepSeek operate behind the scenes, how the one-person, one-file system works, 
and how everyday moments are turned into permanent data. If this opened your eyes, give the video a like. Subscribe for more deep dives into how technology is reshaping the world. And let us know in the comments what you think the future of surveillance will look like.